This is Chris Burns from Slash Gear. Today we're going to look at SwiftKey 3. Now this is a beta look at this uh, application. It works on both uh, smartphones and has a slightly different interface for tablets. We're going to look at that as well. And what we're going to do first is tap into here. Right away we're going to look at different sorts of uh, key sets that you can have. Now what you're working with here with SwiftKey is a customized keyboard experience. That uh, usually would mean something that is similar to what you're seeing right here where the keys are different colors. Uh, we're going to stick with Cobalt because that's one of the newer ones. You also got things like Hollow, which is uh, much closer to Ice Cream Sandwich, which is what we've got here again on the HTC One uh, X. And uh, you've got Light, Neon, Pumpkin, and Dark. Tap back. You can see uh, a couple more options you have here. You can change it to C4 in characters and allow arrow keys. And then you have a whole list of different things you can work with. Now, you can uh, start off by looking up here. You can, check, you can check from this massive list of different languages you can work with. A uh, whole big list of these were added just for this release. You'll learn more about that in the review. You get uh, the themes is what we just looked at, or we're able to go into themes like there. Uh, personalization is where you connect with all your different other sorts of services. Uh, you can learn uh, your your learn the way that you type, learn learn your sort of patterns and such uh, from all sorts of different services, Facebook, uh, Gmail, Twitter, and etc. And all that information is fed back into SwiftKey if you want. Uh, that's not a damn brand new sort of feature, but we're going through everything on here just to show you what uh, SwiftKey is all about for you, new, for you uh, new users. Advanced, you can see here you can change things, uh, changing what the space bar will do down to uh, different things like portrait key height. You can change the key heights for everything and uh, change everything around you want on this uh, this uh, very customizable keyboard. We'll skip some of these other items because they are uh, not necessary right now. Like Swift Key 3 stats is pretty cool. Uh, uh, we're not too far into it so they don't, wouldn't show much. But um, when you're typing it'll show your efficiency, your keystrokes, uh, typos and words completed, etc. Again, this application has just been installed on this device, so we're really, really low on everything, but yours will get really big really, really quickly. So let's go back out. We already have it activated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here to uh, Google search to show you the keyboard. Now, again, we're working with Cobalt, and uh, the thing what we're going to do here is type in some stuff. If I type into, if I type in uh, slash here extremely quickly, Got it. Uh, let's see what else we want to do. Welcome to the jungle. Got human out of that one. The gold cats. Double space there. Now one of the things it's doing here is uh, putting spaces in for you. One of the things that this new uh, version of SwiftKey can do uh, really quite well, actually, is decide when you've forgotten a space so you can actually type in a sentence without any space bar, hitting the space bar at all whatsoever, and it'll pop all those spaces in there for you. So that's pretty cool. What I'm also going to do, show you here, is this application on the tablet. Now I'm going to show you both, both configurations here, but this is... Uh, this is the Galaxy Tab 7.7. .7. This is a Verizon version, which means it's uh, LTE. And as you can see right here, we are just still in the activate mode for learn from Gmail and Twitter and Facebook. I'll tap some of those off for now. And as you can see, once it pops up, we have quite a different look at how you work with a keyboard. Now, you've got squares here rather than sort of uh, rectangles on the last build. And uh, it's separated for you. Numbers are down the middle because you're going to not be typing those as much, and everything else is on the sides. So if I type in slash gear space, it cut it in half for us. Now, slash gear is a word which uh, eventually we're going to want as one word because, you know, the name of the site, name of our site is one word, slash gear. Uh, but as, as uh, Suki at the moment doesn't know what slash gear is because we just started typing on it, it'll put that space in there for us. Uh, this keyboard also works in, in a, a flat configuration like this where it's all together. 
You can switch back and forth very easily. Uh, if you want to get to the extra characters, you can tap there. Tap in the corner for more characters again. If you hold down, you can see extra characters. On this particular keyboard, there is only one character per uh, spot. But if you go back into your main keyboard, you can hold down and see the alternate uh, keys for all these different uh, letters. Like J can be equal, K can be the start of that, and etc. Down here, you got a few different ones like exclamation point, question mark, comma, period. Uh, these features I just showed you also work, of course, on the smartphone version. And all of your settings can be accessed from down here on the left. You also have your voice input from there, uh, share and support, and that, that goes to your to the app actually in the in the uh, Google Play App Store. And go all the way back to settings just like this. Go into personalization, or theme. If we're going to theme. We'll put it to pumpkin and set it just like that. Uh, just to show you pumpkin here, one second, we'll go into like uh, YouTube here and tap into a keyboard and there it's all pumpkin-y. Pretty cool, huh? Check it out. This uh, this build of SwiftKey is still in beta again, so you'll have to be part of the beta program to check it out, but it'll be out soon on the App Store. That's SwiftKey 3.